I grew up in this very small Midwestern community, out in the middle of the country. It was really an awesome place to grow up in, because of the environment. Woods and creeks surrounded the whole area, and growing up there, I spent a lot of time out in these woods. This area I grew up in was rumored to be haunted because of the old cemetery that was at the edge of this town, but this is not what the story is about. It was around 2001. I was about 16 at the time. It was right around the beginning of October, and my next door neighbor, who was around 10 or so at the time, was having a Halloween slash birthday party, and he had several other kids from his grade. As part of the festivities, they were planning on taking a hayride through the woods. I thought it would be fun to try and scare them while they were on this ride, so as they were about to leave, I slipped away and went down to the woods. It was about 9.30pm at this time, and it was very dark outside. I made my way into the woods, and decided I was going to hide under the side of the large bridge that crossed the creek, so I climbed down the rail and stood on the cement platform below to wait. I had been waiting in this spot for around 10 minutes. I was watching for the truck's headlights to come down the road so I could get into position. As I'm watching down the road, I see a man walk out of the woods and onto the side of the road. I couldn't tell exactly what he was doing, as he was probably 75 feet or so away from me, and it was really dark in the woods at night. I found it odd that the guy didn't have a flashlight or anything, but then again neither did I. After about 20 seconds or so, the guy turned around and walked back into the woods. I didn't think he had seen me, because I had been in my location for a good 10 minutes before I ever saw him. I didn't feel too threatened either, because in order to get to me he would have to cross a bridge or the water to sneak up on me. I stayed in my spot for another couple of minutes and watched the area where the guy went back into the woods. I never did see any light, and he soon disappeared deeper into the woods. After a few minutes, I decided it would probably be best to get out of there. I quietly climbed out from under the bridge and made my way out of the woods and back to the party. I didn't think anyone else had gone out there to scare the kids besides me. I clearly saw the silhouette of this man, and his appearance was much different than anyone else's at the party. Tall and decently built. When I got back, I asked my neighbor's parents if anyone else was out in the woods trying to scare the kids during the hayride, and they said no. When the kids returned, I asked the guy driving the truck about it, and he saw no such person. So, I just saw a man walk out of the dark woods, only to re-enter it. It was creepy, but I never felt like I was in much danger, as I'm pretty sure he never saw me. So a couple of days later, I'm out in the woods with a buddy from down the street, during the daytime though this time. We were near the area where I saw this guy and we find this post that had been buried in the ground, and on top of it are three animal skulls. They are large skulls too, appearing to be that of a dog or a possible deer. The post was in the center of a star with a circle made around it from animal bones. Clearly someone had spent some time building this, but it gets even scarier. A short ways up from the post was a dead goat. It had a rope tied around its neck and its throat had been slit. My friend and I knocked down the post and left. While it was obviously a very disturbing thing to find, I guess we didn't think much of it, because this area had its fair share of oddities because of the rumors about it being haunted, and we assumed it was just people trying to scare people and create a good story. Now jump ahead a few weeks. I was usually out at night a fair amount. My friend and I liked to ride our bikes around the streets at night and talk, and on this particular night, we noticed a group of four people walking around the streets. They were wearing all black. We acknowledged them, but they didn't say anything back. It was odd, but whatever. We saw them a couple other times that week too, just being creepers. Now here's the scariest part of all, and I need to be completely honest. I can't remember if this event was the same week or if it was a couple weeks later after we saw these people on the streets but I know it was around this time because my friend moved away shortly after this happened, and I know it was closely related to this time period. My friend was the oldest of six kids, and he had a sister who was 12 at the time, who shared a bedroom with her three-year-old sister. One night at around two or three in the morning, she heard a noise by the doorway of their bedroom. 
She rolled over to look, and standing in the doorway was a guy wearing all black. She started screaming and the guy immediately took off. Her parents' bedroom was directly across the hall from hers, and they came. When they went into the living room, the front door was wide open. Someone had definitely been in their house. They looked outside, but couldn't find anyone. I assume they slipped into a nearby house or the woods which was a short distance away. I don't know their intent, but I have a pretty good idea. I know there was a cult activity that went on out there in the woods. Thankfully, she heard that noise and looked over before it was too late. There's unsolved disappearances all over the world. Some of them make big news, like Madeleine McCann, the Sodder Children, or Lars Matank, so the whole world knows about them. But some of those unsolved disappearances are lesser known. My best friend from when I was a child is such a case. I'm a 19-year-old female, and this all started about eight years ago. Like many 11-year-old girls, I had a best friend, who we will call Clara. We spent a lot of time together, had lots of inside jokes, you know, typical best friends. One day Clara didn't come to school. At first, I thought she might simply be sick, but when she didn't come back for multiple days, I started to get worried, so I decided to call her to ask what was wrong. But she didn't pick up her phone, neither her cell phone nor her house phone. When I told my mom about it, she was concerned as well. She's a nurse at the local hospital, where Claire's mother worked as a chairwoman. She told me that Claire's mother hadn't been to work in a few days either, after she had called in and said that she had the flu. My mother thought that maybe Claire's mom had passed the flu on to Clara, and now they were both sick. She agreed, however, on going over to check on them, in case they needed help. Clara's mom's car was in the driveway, but all of the blinds were rolled down. When my mom rang the doorbell, she couldn't hear a single sound inside. Clara had a dog that was very protective, so the fact that he wasn't barking struck both of us as odd. We then started asking around, but no one had heard from Clara or her mother in almost a week, not even Clara's dad, who lived two towns over. After a few more days, my mom decided to report them as missing. Another week passed, and Clara came back to school but she was not the girl she had been two weeks ago. She was skinny, had bruises everywhere, and that empty, 1,000-yard stare. She never told me what happened. As a matter of fact, she never told me or anyone else anything. She barely spoke and completely secluded herself from the outside world. As the years went on, it became more and more obvious that Clara was struggling with multiple issues. She was obviously battling an eating disorder and started cutting by the time she was 13. She would frequently miss days or even weeks at school. Our friendship pretty much died, but I couldn't help but care about her. She had no other friends, so I would text her our homework whenever she missed school. But then, when I was 16, Clara called me one night. She was completely hysterical and told me her mother had just been submitted to a mental institution. Upon asking her why, she told me that her mother had developed an obsession with Christianity and the Bible and had been convinced that both herself and Clara had demons lurking inside of them. She then told me about her mother trying to exercise her, sometimes for hours on end, how she would beat her and let strangers try to cast the demons out of both of them. I listened in horror as Clara was telling me all of this. I asked her if I should come over she just told me that she wasn't home right now and refused to tell me where she was. The call ended very abruptly and she wouldn't pick up her phone after that. She wasn't at school the next day. This wasn't unusual, but it still worried me. I tried to call her, but her phone was turned off, so I decided to check on her. But when I got to her house, I found that it was empty. And I mean empty. I looked through the windows and all the furniture had vanished. There was no trace of Clara. I reported her as missing, but nothing ever came of it. 
I periodically call the police for updates, but they haven't found anything. I don't know the details of what Clara's mom did to her, but I am sure as how glad she's locked up, and I hope she never sees her again. As for Clara, wherever you might be, I hope you are alive and well. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. If you would like a chance to have your story featured in an upcoming video, make sure you email it to yourmaker6260 at gmail.com. I hope everyone had a great weekend, and if you watched the Super Bowl, I hope you enjoyed the game. It actually ended up being a pretty damn good game the second half. And if you just relaxed, I hope it was very relaxing. I'll catch you guys in the next video. And just remember, it's always scarier if it's true.